Hello and welcome to our 1,000 subscriber Q&A special here on Coach Max Entertainment. And like, let me, let me be frank for a minute. This is amazing. I never thought that I would be able to hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. I had always hoped I could. I'd always hoped I'd be able to make a career out of this. And you know what? That could happen. But for right now, we just passed 1,000. And that's all because of you people out there. And sometimes I will watch my videos on repeat, just so I get extra views. And so as a treat for you guys, I wanted to do this 1,000 subscriber Q&A, where you guys could ask me some questions. I'd be able to give you some answers. Just a little more, give you a little bit of insight into what I do from questions that you guys specifically had. And I wrote them down on flashcards. So yeah, we're gonna mix mix all these up, that way we get a random assortment of the questions. But the first question that I'm going to talk about is what I addressed way back in about January, I think. I don't remember in all honesty. It was in the video on if you can beat Pokemon Shield with just a score bunny. You have to pick a number for your character inside the big arena, and I picked the number 19. And in that video I said, hey, I will tell you what, like, why I picked that number when we get to a thousand subs. And then that actually happened. So that's pretty crazy. And let me tell you, it's so not worth it. So I picked the number 19 because 19 became my favorite number when I was in college. It is the number of one of my favorite Cincinnati Reds players, Joey Votto, but the number 19 to me became my favorite because I went to a college called Fried Hardeman University, and it's a very, very small private Christian college. There was an event we did called Making Music. What it was is essentially a seven minute musical that's part of a competition. Now I know that they do plays and musicals for competitions, but this was like an intense on-campus competition. There's the group that's essentially the bad guys of all the groups that compete, although I, they're, they're not really, you know what I'm saying. And their thing that they did was chant the number that they would be on if they won that year. So they would chant, my freshman year they chanted 18, because if they won making music that year, that would be their 18th win. Well, my junior year, I was a director for a show from a different club, different organization, and so the other group, they were chanting 19 at the time. And so I started picking 19 out of spite and be like, they won't win. I'll do better than them. We got third and they won. So 19 just became stuck with me. But I really like the number. You can find the video I was in, the show. It was a Beauty and the Beast themed show. I was the beast. Down below, it, it's just, if you don't know what it is, there's no way to really experience it. But mm, I loved it so much. All right, now we're gonna go on to y'all's questions. See, I told you that wasn't worth it. So the first question is, Landon Zimmerman says, can you update the layout, Cyndaquil is bothering me, crying emoji. Yeah, I did that, but I forgot to update it. Oh well, it's okay. Shade XVII, which I'm, I think is 17? I can't remember right now. What is your favorite Pokemon spinoff? So, my favorite game of all time is Crash Team Racing. We know that. But my favorite Pokemon spinoff game is Pokemon Puzzle League for the Nintendo 64. If you don't know about it, it's basically Tetris Attack with a Pokemon skin on it. And y'all, I love that game so, so much. I really want to do a Let's Play of it at some point or do it on stream. I'm not phenomenal at it but I was able to beat it on super hard mode, so. Aaron Jackson says, have you ever thought about premiering these episodes? I actually replied to this comment, but I thought it would be a good thing to talk about. He replied to it, or he commented on an episode of the Nuzlocke, but I said, you know, I've thought about premiering some of my Pokemon runs, or whenever I have a video that's not Pokemon themed, that's not like a Let's Play. And so I think that would be really cool. And so for the Relicanth video, whenever that's coming out in the next few days from when this video is going up, I'll be premiering that. So yeah, you can look forward to that. That'll be cool. 
Ben Koopa asks, what was your favorite play that we did? Let's give a little backstory right here. Ben is one of the students at the junior high that I teach at, and I am also, on top of being a cross-country coach, basically assistant director to the junior high middle school plays that we all do, and Ben is part of them. We did a play that I really liked called Sally Cotter and the Censored Stone. It's basically Harry Potter, but parody version, and it was hilarious. You can find a lot of cool videos of it on YouTube, and I would highly recommend checking those out. Emily Fravel says, can you beat Pokemon Fire Red with a Dratini? I don't know. In all honesty, I beat Pokemon Red with a Dratini, so maybe? I'm not real sure. Dubious asks, what is your favorite mythical Pokemon? Shaman. Shaman. I love hedgehogs. I love Sonic. Look at that. See, I got, I got some Sonic stuff. They don't make those Funko Pop anymore. Like, mmm. Love Sonic. Blake McLaughlin, or as you guys know, McLovin, says, why do you wear glasses, you nerd? Well, there's a funny story about that. We grew up going, it wasn't actually until a little while after we were in like middle school age, uh, we grew up going to a youth camp for Labor Day weekend, uh, a church retreat to Hillbrook Christian Camp in Knoxville, Tennessee. Not really Knoxville, one of those smaller areas, but that's the basic thing. We were going back to the cabins. For some reason, Blake swung his hand and it knocked my glasses off my face. And I'm very protective of my glasses. And I don't remember it happening, but I just swung my arm and it made contact with his back. And he said that was some of the most intense pain he had ever been in. And he says that he still gets phantom pains in his back. So that's why I wear glasses. Mountain D18 asks, what got you into making challenge videos? And are you interested in doing challenge videos of other games? Views. But seriously, I was looking for something that would bring in a little more traffic than what I was doing. I, doing just the generic video game and movie reviews wasn't getting my name out there as quickly as I wanted to. But it seriously turned into one of my favorite things. I love having an excuse to just play through Pokemon over and over and over rather than it just being a let's play. You know, something like that. And I'd certainly like to do challenges of other games. Uh, one person actually suggested playing through Kingdom Hearts 2 using only magic, and I think that would be really sick. So, you know, we might have some challenges down the road. Uh, Blake McLaughlin, McLovin, actually gave me an idea for a Wii Sports challenge, and so hopefully I can get that done before the end of summer. We'll, we'll see. Pokemon Lord asks, how old are you and how tall are you? I am 83 and three foot six. TBP PBT asks, do you ever pick a favorite or least favorite class period or student? And then he goes on to say, I was always a top 15 student. And guys, like I can tell you exactly who that student is, the top 15, like <laughs> that's phenomenal. So if your teachers ever say, I don't have favorites, you're all my favorites, that's a lie. We definitely have our favorite students and favorite least favorite like classes, but it's always interesting how that changes through the year. Because at the beginning of the year, I'm gonna be honest, there's some students I don't have a lot of hope for. Obviously, I hope I can you know make something of them or at least put them on the right path, but sometimes they turn around at the end of the year and you're just so sad to see them go. There's also those classes that you think are gonna be fantastic and they're not. But the opposite happens too, so that's okay. Arantula says, how do you structure your editing with videos? Scripts or no scripts? About how long does it normally take? Well, let me just tell you about it. I definitely believe in scripting videos. Having them not scripted just doesn't fit with what I'm doing with the Pokemon challenges and just generic video game stuff. What I'll do is have a Google Doc open on my computer and have the Pokemon episode, or recording, or whatever I've got playing on the side of it, because I can't always remember what happened right at that moment, so I have to watch through the footage again. The next thing I'll do is whenever I get into Premiere Pro, I'll take that audio file of me reading the script and throw it in, and kind of chop it down a little bit, putting the video in as it goes. 
Here's a finished video of it, showing where I've moved video files into it, things like that. And as for how long it normally takes, it definitely just depends. I don't really consider getting footage as part of the video process, but if I were to include that, it would definitely increase it by about four to six hours. And it just depends on what game I'm talking about too. Obviously, as I've done a whole lot more with YouTube and Premiere, I'm able to move very quickly through the videos. Before, it would take me about three days, not from start to finish, but to work on a video. But now if I am focused, I can pump out a video relatively quickly in all thing, in all honesty. Potrot asks, have you ever played Wario Land 4 for the GBA, and would you mind doing a Let's Play down the road of it? You know, it's funny, Wario Land 4 was one of those games included in the 3DS Ambassador program, and if you don't know what that was, back in 2011, I think, the Nintendo 3DS was not selling well at all because it was 250, and nobody was buying it for 250. I bought it for 250. And so Nintendo dropped the price from 250 to 170, but they were like, hey, you people that bought it, you can be part of the Ambassador program. And so it came with 10 NES games and 10 GBA games. The 10 NES games were eventually released on the 3DS store, but the GBA games never were. So the only way to get those games on your GBA, legally I guess, without ROM, you know what I'm saying, was to go through the Ambassador program. And so Wario Land 4 is one of those games on there, and I really liked it a little bit. It was pretty fun. And so would I mind doing a Let's Play? I don't see why not. Pika Ethan Does Vlogs says, Can you beat Pokemon Blue with Zubat? Yes. And Fry's Odyssey, or Phrase, I'm not sure, says, any plans on some other games on the channel? Here's the thing. Like I've said, I've had other video games on the channel. I have a Mario 64 video that I think is pretty good. Spider-Man for the PS1, Toy Story, whatever. I like video games in general. The Pokemon stuff just kind of came about because I got on this bandwagon of the Pokemon challenges, and they're very, very fun. I've actually, you know, made so many connections doing the challenge videos. But I do want to do things other than just Pokemon. So we're going to get some of that down the road for sure. And guys, that's the last one. Thank you so much. 100%. I, I am just so thankful for everything that you, my subscribers, have done for me. Giving me the opportunity to do this. During this whole quarantine, this has given me something to do, rather than just mindlessly play video games. I mindlessly played video games and then made videos about them. And that's just, that's fantastic. This creative outlet has been something that I had no idea I really needed. And so we're going to look to the future, which is over there that direction. Do I want to do this full time? Absolutely. But right now, I can't give up teaching. It's just financially way too irresponsible. But down the road, if it became financially viable to do this, you better believe I would. But for now, you can just expect the normal from Coach Max Entertainment. Except, maybe not the normal. I just finished a stream that you can find right here if I put it on screen. If not, oh well. Of me streaming Pokemon Red and doing a speed run. Um, it was a five hour long video. It wasn't a very fast speed run. It was a good stream. And so, with that, until next time, thank you so much, and see you later.